WTBX, Fort Pierce, West Palm Beach. The spirit of Florida. The 11 o'clock report with Kurt Fonger, Evelyn Cole, weather with Ed Birchfield, and Steve Yavner Sports. Extremist leaders meet in Beirut to discuss the hostage crisis. Iran offers to work with the United States. Good evening, I'm Evelyn Cole. I'm Kurt Fonger. The effort to find a solution to the hostage situation has brought unlikely partners together. Frank Sesno explains President Bush is optimistic Iran's new president will help resolve the crisis. Well, I President Bush saying he'll go to every end possible to get America's hostages out of Lebanon has cautiously welcomed an apparent offer of help from Iran's new president. Hashemi Rafsanjani said at Friday prayers in Tehran that if the U.S. takes a sensible attitude, we will help solve the problems. Uh, I don't know the total role of any individual country in that area in all of this, but when you see a, a statement that offers hope uh, for the return of our hostages, I want to explore it to the fullest. The U.S. has been communicating intensively with Iran through Swiss and Japanese intermediaries over the past several days. A senior administration official directly involved in the process says Rafsanjani's public statements are not inconsistent with what we're hearing privately. From the State Department, the most positive words for Iran in years. Based on the excerpts we have seen, President Rafsanjani's remarks appear to be moderate and are therefore encouraging. I'm encouraged, but I don't want to get the hopes of the uh, hostages' loved ones up once again to have those hopes dashed. This is a brutal process. Despite the policy of not negotiating with terrorists, there may be new flexibility. Aides say the president is willing to broaden the dialogue with Iran, provided Iran is willing to act responsibly and help resolve the hostage issue. The overtures to Iran are just a part of the intensive diplomatic efforts underway. The president has been on the phone this week with everyone from Saudi King Fahd to Pope John Paul II. American officials say U.S. warships will remain in the eastern Mediterranean. A top official tells CNN President Bush had decided to retaliate if Joseph Sicipio were killed. The official says the response would have been pure revenge. Official Algiers Radio is reporting progress has been made involving Algeria's ambassador in Beirut. Talks involve all hostages, including Americans. Officials did not elaborate. Many people in this country are held hostage by fear of crime. Here's an example why. What you see here is a crime. Wednesday morning, a convenience store in Tampa. <laughs> The, the tape enabled us to make positive identification of the two suspects that went into the store. And there were witnesses to a car speeding away. And now two accused robbers and their driver have been hauled into court. The clerk is alive, but in serious condition. And there was another convenience store robbery and shooting in Tampa this morning. This time, the clerk died. The killer got away. In the past month, Florida has been plagued with a rash of fatal shootings. Charles Jaco reports the gunplay is raising many questions about growing firepower on Florida streets. Bill Lee was shot July 6th while checking a car with drug suspects inside. He just uh, laid down a barrage of fire on me and actually hit me after I was behind my car. Just the number of rounds he fired, he was able to get one underneath the car, actually skip underneath the car, and it hit me in the leg. On July 23rd, a homeless drifter armed with a powerful semi-automatic pistol opened fire at a Hollywood, Florida bus stop. A bus driver and a passenger died. The man, Joseph Basaraba, had a legal permit to carry a concealed weapon. Law enforcement officials say a looser Florida state gun law passed in 1987 is partly responsible for more firepower showing up in the hands of criminals. That new law eliminated county-by-county -county background checks that existed before 1987. On July 22nd, three masked men killed a waiter at a family-owned Italian restaurant in Tamarack, Florida. The arsenal they carried, including a 9mm semi-automatic pistol, came from a home burglary the three had committed. Two years ago, my house was broken into, and uh, among the things that they took from my house was a 38 uh, caliber revolver, 
And uh, that gives me a great concern because I know that uh, my gun is out there. Who knows in whose hands? Groups like the National Rifle Association say criminals will get guns no matter what the laws say. But Florida law enforcement officials claim the growing street firepower is part of a vicious cycle. Eased gun laws mean more people can now own guns without having background checks run. That makes it easier for criminals to obtain powerful weapons legally. It also makes it easier for criminals to steal guns simply because there are more guns around. Charles Jacob, Miami. Search crews in Georgia found the wreckage of a Florida plane missing since July 21st. The plane went down in a heavily wooded mountain area in North Georgia. Four people were on board and no one survived. The plane was headed for Tennessee. The cause of the crash has not been determined. Countdown starts one minute after midnight for the shuttle Columbia. NASA managers gave technicians the green light to head for a Tuesday morning liftoff. The 30th shuttle mission will carry a secret military payload, so the exact time of launch will not be given out in advance. Engineers are still working on a problem in Columbia's engine compartment, but NASA says there are no major problems. The final curtain is about to fall on the Burt Reynolds Jupiter Dinner Theater. The actor's involvement ends tomorrow night with the theater Reynolds built 10 years ago. He and his wife, Lonnie Anderson, will be in attendance for the last performance of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. In May, Reynolds donated the theater to Palm Beach Community College. The producer of tomorrow night's show promises the play will have a little something extra to make sure the theater goes out in style. A class act. Just ahead, oil exploration is on the move inland. And a big gasoline spill cost one company a bundle. Stay tuned. If you just bought a Toyota Tercel Deluxe, you might want to turn me off. Now that they're tuned out, I'm going to turn you on to the world's best-selling car, Ford Escort. Escort's larger standard engine delivers more horsepower than Tercel and still gets great gas mileage. Escort has more passenger room, too. More cargo area and an Escort with free air is over $1,000 less than Tercel. $1,000? Why, that's enough gas money to drive the world's best-selling car around the world. See Escort today at your Florida and South Georgia Ford dealers. Randall Charles Martin, age 32 years, looks older, acts older. Randall Charles Martin, one year later, looks younger, feels younger, more confident. The reason? The new image step-by-step -step method. Possibly the most advanced hair replacement method ever devised. Definitely the most natural. Operators are standing by. Call now for your free brochure. Saturday, July 15th, Steve Barnett Pontiac Cadillac in Fort Pierce. The film fan Factfinder Fantasy Grand Prize Drawing. Charlotte Grinwald, the steward, cries her key. Steve Barnett congratulates Charlotte Grinwald on winning this Pontiac Firebird. And in celebration, we'll continue to offer through August a $1,000 discount coupon towards the purchase of a new or used car. Environmental battles over Florida oil exploration have moved ashore. Frustrated at attempts at offshore drilling, Shell Oil Company has leased drilling rights to 70 acres of Everglades land in Broward County. The land is owned by Mikosuke Indians. Half is in the Everglades Conservation District. On water, land, or wetland, Governor Martinez has pledged to fight drilling in conservation areas. No one wants petroleum products contaminating the environment, but cleanup isn't cheap. As our Kathy Richter tells us, the Superfund helps, but first, a company must qualify for payback. The Gary Evans Sitco opened in June. A little more than a month later, the business experienced a devastating gasoline spill. Environmental reclamation systems took on the job of cleaning it up. It's a three-step process. Is to, first of all, recover all accessible free product. In order to do that, we began pumping immediately. That included monitor wells and the drain areas that are in question. Uh, we mechanically plugged any pipe or drainage was going off the site immediately. Also in the first stage of spill cleanup, contaminated soil must be removed and the spill contained. The company doing the cleanup can apply for reimbursement from the federal government's Superfund for this phase. Before concrete can be poured back over a test hole at this sitgo, the second stage of cleanup must take place, including the okay from the Department of Environmental Regulation and St. Lucie fire officials. At that point, when everybody is satisfied that the contamination has been dealt with uh, and the levels are low enough, we will close. 
uh, allow the man to go back into business, and then we'll address a contamination assessment report and what to do about remediating contaminated soils. Remediating means taking out contaminated soil, cleaning it with a microbe, then replacing the soil. At this point, the DER wants a report assessing exactly how much contamination took place. Reimbursement for the second stage can be applied for then. We have not, I emphasize not, put any contamination, no contamination has left this site to date. Uh, we have tested the canal areas and because of the uh, soil lenses incorporated on the site, uh, we have reason to believe that we have not yet dropped into the drinking water. Then the company must continue to monitor the site until the DER is sure it will stay clean. That could be two years. There are no figures on what this cleanup will cost, but officials say it could range from a quarter of a million dollars to millions. Kathy Richter, WTVX News. Ed Birchfield is next with your weekend weather outlook. He says Hurricane Dean heads north while the sunshine heads south. Stay with us. Did you notice that the whole world is on sale? Well, it is, and I'd like to introduce you to the automotive department. At my Lincoln Mercury dealership, you will find hundreds of town cars, Continentals, Grand Marquis, Cougars, and used cars that are on sale now at year-end closeout prices. If you're in the market for a new car, you owe it to yourself to see what we have to offer. Over 200 cars in stock at year-end closeout prices. Remember, all our customers are treated like family. Visit us soon. I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. Starting Monday, many Treasure Coast viewers will need to turn to a news source for local news. At Action 5 News, reporting the stories that affect the Treasure Coast, of course, is nothing new. When Stewart, Fort Pierce, Fort St. Lucie, or Vero Beach need to know, Action 5 News will be there for you. If you live on the Treasure Coast, turn to Action 5 News at noon, 5.30, 6 and 11, and NBC Nightly News at 6.30. Together, we cover the Treasure Coast and the world. WTVX Channel 34 and WMXQ are going to take you back in time for the 30th anniversary of Rock and Roll, August 11th at the West Palm Beach Auditorium, starring such legends of rock as Otis Day, The Trogs, The Coasters, and a whole lot more. Rock the night away with Channel 34 and WMXQ. It's the 30th anniversary of Rock and Roll Friday night, August 11th, 8 o'clock at the West Palm Beach Auditorium. Why is everybody always picking on me? Ed Birchfield and our weather center are welcome news about Hurricane oh, Dean. Oh, sure. It, uh, we talked about it, of course, at 6 o'clock that uh, Hurricane Dean was heading north and even more so now and expected to continue in that direction. And that's out of the picture as far as we're concerned. So it's good news that we enter the weekend mm -hmm. because the forecast looks pretty good, too. We've good. got that story coming up in Terrific. just a moment. Got some pretty pictures, too. We just happened to capture the essence of the rose with this video. Very nice. And I certainly hope you've got uh, one of those growing in your yard. I've attempted it, and I've attempted it, and as of yet, I can't get that to happen. But we'll keep trying. Got up to 92 today after a morning low of 73. Currently, it's 82, 81 degrees on the beach. Our barometer is beginning to rise, as is the humidity. Winds are east-northeasterly at 5, and on the beach, more north-northeasterly at around 11 miles per hour. Here's our temperatures. As we left you at 6.15, it looked like this, and they've dropped off, as you would suspect, especially so with the uh, high pressure building to the north. We're beginning to get some of those nice breezes. It actually feels pretty good outside. 80 and 82 around the lake, and that's pretty much the story around uh, the coast. 80 at Stewart for the coolest, and 83 at Boca for the warmest. No problems rain-wise. Skies are partly cloudy, I guess. Okay, here is Dean, and even as we look at it without really pointing out any land masses, it looks like it's moving further to the north, and that's certainly good news. Here's a graphic look, and this system is what apparently is doing the job for us, upper level trough, moving on down, of course, squeezing Dean up to the north. And with that in mind, here's our 11 o'clock coordinates. 23 north, 63.9 west. Movement now to the north at 12. Winds remain 85 miles per hour. Some strengthening, by the way, could occur as uh, Dean continues to move to the north. As a matter of fact, it's, uh, barometric pressure now 29.03 and location 650 miles south of Bermuda and moving north, which is away from us. Back here at home, it was a hot, humid day just about everywhere in advance of this frontal system. Rains from New Mexico all the way up to the lakes and across to New York. In Gloversville, New York today, the rain was so heavy that the manhole covers were popping up as a result of flooding. Tomorrow, it's gonna be basically the same as we continue with high pressure. This system will be moving on down, compressing the humidity, and even on Sunday, 
uh, in, in advance of that line, still more thunderstorms expected. And as we look at that, let's take a look at our forecast. Partly cloudy skies, mild temperatures tonight, light winds, 75 to 78 degrees. And tomorrow, sunny in the morning, partly cloudy with showers in the afternoon, east winds and a high of about 92 degrees. Enjoy your weekend. A few thunder showers for the boaters overnight, otherwise smooth bay and inland waters. Winds will be more northeasterly with seas running one to two feet and a surf temp of 78. Our tide will next be low, 443 at Sebastian, 12 minutes after 6 at Boynton Beach. And as we look ahead, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, more of the same, partly cloudy skies with a chance of those afternoon showers. And there you have. Ed, Ed, I I know I, I probably speak for Kurt when I say it has been an honor working with you. Listen, I've been thinking about this for some time, and did you know it's been almost five years that I've been doing the weather in one form or another around here, and... Uh, met a lot of people in all that time, and uh, I would like to thank those that I have worked with and those that have viewed me and those especially here in the last few weeks that have come up with well wishes. Mm -hmm. And I might just say one final form, in those almost five years, it's been all my pleasure, mm -hmm. and I thank you. It's been ours, too, to work with mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Good luck, Ed. John Apicello is next with sports. Toronto goes for perfection tonight against the Yanks. Also, what kind of miniature golf course would Donald Trump build? Here's a clue. There's lots of miniature buildings with his name on it. Stay tuned. As a caregiver, I know that overnight protection is important to people with a heavy bladder control problem. That's why Depend Fitted Breeds have been improved. They're 30% more absorbent for better overnight protection. And only Depend has six refashionable tapes. So, they're the best fitting briefs available. Better overnight protection means a better night's sleep for everyone. Rest assured with Depend fitted briefs. Hi, I'm Jim Brosmer. And I'm Sheila O'Connor. I've been covering news in this area for more than 21 years. Recently, we both joined the Channel 25 news team because we saw a new opportunity to serve this area. Did you know that Channel 25 is the first West Palm Beach television station with a full-time, fully staffed, live Treasure Coast News Bureau located right in Fort Pierce? We hope that you, the Treasure Coast viewer, will join our Channel 25 news team. We did. And we're both proud of it. A hot summer on WTVX continues with Evil That Men Do Week on the 8 o'clock movie. Monday, James Coburn in Death of a Soldier. Tuesday, it's Roger Moore in Vendetta for the Saint. Wednesday, a private detective is thrown into murder in The Chilling. Thursday, Susan Lucci and Robert Urich in Invitation to Hell. And then on Friday, fire strikes a young boy in the midst of a murder. Will anyone believe him? Sudden terror. It's Evil That Men Do Week, all next week on 34 for You. John Apicello is here to tell us the story about a man who, if he didn't have bad luck, he wouldn't have any luck at all. If you can have bad luck while you're having just a tremendous outing, Dave Steeb is the man, and he's been through this before. All right, perfection is something we all strive for, and when someone does, or almost does, something spectacular in its flawlessness, you have to appreciate it. So with that in mind, let's go to Toronto. Top of the second, you can see what kind of night Dave Steeb is having. With a great breaking ball, he K's Jesse Barfield untouchable. Meanwhile, Ernie Witt here beats the throw to first. George Bell scores to give him a little backing. It's 1-0 Toronto. We go to the top of the six. Steve still with the perfect game. He K's Roberto Kelly. Well, we'll go to the ninth. Two outs, the perfect game, riding on Roberto Kelly once again. And, oh, he spoiled the party. He broke up the perfect game with a double. Steve would have to settle for a two-hitter and a two-to-one complete game win. To the American League board, Oakland's Dave Stewart his first 16 game winner in the American League as they win Cleveland over Boston today. Minnesota beats Kansas City. Texas is topping those O's in the eighth inning. Detroit and Chicago all knotted up. California and Milwaukee in the seventh inning. Well, it's getting close to put up or shut up time for the Mets. It's August and they stand seven games back at the Expos tonight. Hey, no excuses. They're hosting Montreal at Shea. So let's go there where Buck Williams has a good mouthful of chew as he's watching the first inning. Howard Johnson will set the tone with this homer deep to right field. A three-run shot. It's 3-0 Mets. 
We're still in the first inning. Dave Magazin with a drive to deep right field. The geek of a lifetime. Here he comes. Daryl Strawberry around the third, and he's going to score. It's 4 nothing Mets. We'll go to the third. Marty Lyons with the shot here to left field. It'll fall in. The Expos had closed it to 4-3, but two more runs right here, and the Mets would go on to win this one by a score of 11-5 to, to the National League board. Cubs got a run in the ninth to beat Pittsburgh. Eric Davis, homer, number 20, Cincinnati a winner. St. Louis defeating Philadelphia, L.A. and San Diego. Houston and San Francisco just getting going out on the coast. In golf action at the St. Jude Classic, Ed Fiore with a four under 67 to take the lead in Memphis, Tennessee. And the LPGA, Beth Daniels, 66, has her on top of the leaderboard after the first round. All right, no one can deny the Pittsburgh Steelers were the team of the 70s with four Super Bowl titles. And tomorrow, a pair of players from those great teams will get the ultimate honor. And I'm talking about the Hall of Fame. Four men in all will enter the Hall of Fame tomorrow, two from the great stellar powerhouse. There's Terry Bradshaw and a teammate, Mel Blunt. Also, Oakland Raiders offensive tackle, Art Shell. And they'll be inducted in Canton tomorrow. Stratton Mountain, Vermont must be the land of the giant killers because all the big names in this Volvo Invitational are dropping well, like, quite frankly, like news programs around here. So with that in mind, let's go to the Volvo in Vermont where the latest victim, French Open champ Michael Chang. Chang went down to unseated Jim Brab, 6-2 and 6-4 today. Finally, no real words of wisdom on this, the final WTVX sportscast. I'd just like to thank the guy who ran the ship for the past seven years. This is none other than Steve Yavner for all he's done to make me better at what I do. Just remember to always carpe diem, seize the day. And that is all of it. Kurt, Evelyn, and Ed, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. You've done a great job this week. Thank you. Still to come, Donald Trump has himself a new toy. The question remains, will it be named after the billionaire? Tune in to the boys' endless summer, the Red Hot Cure for the Summertime Blues. Sponsored in part by WCCR, tomorrow at 8 on WTVX. What I think people want in the service department is they want somebody that will listen to them and fix the problem right the first time. And here at Veldy Ford, we try and do that. Veldy Ford sells more cars in Indian River County than any other dealership we have for the last 12 years. And I think we've done that from trying to be honest and fair to the customer and trying to get their service work done right the first time. I think the difference at Veldy Ford is we care. This fall on 34 for you. This is Billy Backbomber. He's mean. He's cranky. He's been voted most likely to end up making license plates. Every day he pounds the pudding out of one of his classmates. He's a regular criminal connoisseur. And this year, thanks to Billy, the big dance was held underwater. But this fall, the kids at Frankie Avalon Junior High will finally show him who's the boss. Coming this fall on 34 for you. Let's see. Trump Tower, Trump Plaza, Trump Park, Trump Princess, and now Donald Trump has scored the ultimate. A package that includes the Statue of Liberty in the Empire State Building. Christiana Amanpour explains how he brought all this to Central Park. At the foot of some of the real real estate Donald Trump owns, New York's brashest billionaire has amassed some of the city's crown jewels. The Statue of Liberty, the Brooklyn Bridge, and even the Bronx Zoo. But these are just models that make up a ten-hole miniature golf course on another piece of property Trump renovated, the skating rink in Central Park. Does the sight of all this small-scale property give Trump any big ideas? No, I just want to play. I want to play. I don't want to own. I'm tired of owning. I want to play. <laughs> which he does, teeing off before throngs of press people. One overeager photographer put his foot in it and ruined Trump's chance of a hole-in-one. Still, with the Statue of Liberty looking over his shoulder, he makes it in two. 
An accomplished golfer himself, Trump and the Parks Commissioner decided to open this mini golf to offset some of the revenue losses from less than enthusiastic summertime roller skaters. But come winter, the whole place will revert to an ice skating rink. For now, though, youngsters can practice their putting and read a little about each landmark. The course is not as easy as it looks. It's Manhattan's first open-air mini golf course, complete with LaGuardia Airport and models of the new Trump shuttle. And will this be called Trump Golf? Certainly not, says Trump, whose name is emblazoned across so much New York real estate. That would be far too ostentatious. I like keeping a low image. <laughs> nice low-key image. Yeah. Christian Amonfourth, New York. Don't miss the 30th anniversary of rock and roll, Friday, August 11th at the West Palm Beach Auditorium. Brought to you by WMXQ and WTBX Channel 34 for you. Hello, I'm Dan Rather, and I'm pleased to tell you that Chris Douglas, who's a reporter on Channel 34, has joined WPEC TV 12 Eyewitness News. Chris will be working from TV 12's North Bureau, reporting news from Martin, St. Lucie, and Indian River counties. I hope you'll join Chris Douglas and the TV 12 Eyewitness News team for the best coverage of news in South Florida and the Treasure Coast. And for worldwide coverage, we hope you'll join us for the CBS Evening News on WPEC TV 12. What do you mean it's no big deal? It's Master Care Car Service. The, a real alignment. I've been there. They're alignment specialists. You want computers? Master Care is state of the art. Yeah, I want it to last. It's no big deal. Six month or 6,000 mile warranty. Now, what else do you want? My car to stop changing lanes by itself. No problem. No big deal. Call your neighborhood Master Care Car Service Center and see our ad in Sunday's sports section for other services and tires. This summer, the surf isn't the only thing that's up. Get ready for the Beach Boys Endless Summer, a red-hot hour of music, comedy, and action, starring everyone's all-time favorite group, and joining the Beach Boys in song and fun of the hottest celebrity guests around. So grab your boards, wax your woodies, and get ready for fun, fun, fun in the sun. Tune in to the Beach Boys Endless Summer, the red-hot cure for the summertime blues. Sponsored in part by WCCR, tomorrow at 8 on WTVX. WTVX News has been covering the Treasure Coast in South Florida for 23 years. So it's with great regret that we say our last good night here. By now you know that Kurt and I won't be here next week. We won't be here to say hello, to tell you what's happening in other people's lives, about their triumphs and their sorrows. Now we have to talk about our lives. Through no fault of our own, we are forced to part. We've enjoyed bringing you the news every night. We worked hard to tell you what's so. We could, and you listened. For that, we are grateful, even proud. You've taken us into your homes, and you consider us your friends. To you, we can't say a final goodbye, so until we see you again, take care. And there you are. Television goes on, but without W. With suggestions of what to do this last newscast, showing the names, the faces, highlights, not so highlights, even bearing my keister. But in the end, the business of WTVX News should be what it has always been, news, not nostalgia. And the decision by WTVX to pull the plug on news is its business, purse strings, not public service. Knowing that, I have this thought for you and my colleagues. We walk with our heads held high. I'm with you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. I've been charmed, and you've been a professional, Evelyn. Well, so have you. I'll miss Thank you. you. I'll miss you, too. And I'll miss you. Thank you so much for watching. And have a good life.